Wayne Mark here from NewHomeTricks.com and today I want to take you through part two of my Samsung SmartThings unboxing and setup video. If you remember in the last video we did the actual unboxing and show you what we actually get with the Samsung SmartThings hub. Um, in this video I'm going to take you through the actual setup process. Um, we've actually got this all configured already. Um, first job was of course to find a place to actually physically locate the hub. We managed to find a, a good spot hiding behind the sofa. It doesn't really need to be out in the open most of the time. Uh, it is just a sort of plain white box so hiding it away seemed like a sensible thing to do. You need to plug in uh, a power connection and a network cable. So of course this is going to need to be uh, in close proximity to uh, a power point and you're going to need to find somewhere where you can actually connect the network cable. For most people that's going to go into uh, the back of their um, internet router maybe. Um, if you do have lots of devices plugging in in your home you might need to get some sort of network switch uh, and if your network switch isn't in close proximity to where you're planning to put your smart things hub you might need a longer network cable than the one that comes in the box. It's only 40 or 50 centimeters or so. But once you've found a suitable place for it to go you can then get started with the actual app. Now there are actually two versions of the app available in the store. Um, there's the old SmartThings Classic app, um, but Samsung have kind of launched a new version. Um, they've taken their Samsung Connect app and they're kind of turning that into the new SmartThings app. So there's a bit of a rebrand underway and you'll notice that if you uh, install one of these things yourself, certainly at the moment, is that there's the new version and the old version. The new version doesn't quite yet have all of the functionality that the old one has, um, but Samsung seem to be slowly adding more and more features to the new version, so over the course of time, the new version would presumably completely take over from the old one. At the moment, you can actually use both versions side by side, nothing stopping you doing that, and that is supported according to the FAQs, that's not a problem at all on the Samsung website. Um, but today, I am just gonna go through the process of setting it up with the new version. So let's go ahead and get started and show you how we got on configuring uh, through the app. Okay, so to get started, you of course go to your app store and search for smart things. As mentioned, there are two versions, the old, Samsung, uh, the old SmartThings Classic and the new Samsung Connect version. One thing that I did notice is that in the description for the new version, there's a note that says that the app works best on Samsung phones and that certain features might be restricted on other manufacturers' phones. Now, I don't have a Samsung phone, I've got a Pixel 2 and I've not noticed any issues so far, but I did find it disappointing to see that in the description there. Now, when you go ahead and tap install, you're going to be asked for quite a lot of permissions. Um, it seems to need virtually everything, GPS, contacts, uh, identity, photos, um, the whole works really. There's quite a lot of permissions that are being asked for here. Now, some people might find that a little bit off-putting, and indeed it does seem quite invasive. I can understand why some of the permissions are being requested, but others, I'm not so sure why they're required. Now, once the installation process is completed and you tap on launch, you'll then be asked to confirm some of those permissions. You need to agree to them again. And once that's done, you'll then find yourself watching a short introductory video, just an introduction to smart things. Um, it's a very short video and you can skip this if required. Once you've finished watching this or skipped through the video, um, you'll then be asked to sign in. You need a Samsung account in order to sign in. On the next screen, you can set one up if you don't have one already. Um, I'm gonna skip through the sign-in process because, of course, I don't want to show my username and password on this screen. Um, once you've completed the sign-in process, you're taken back to the app and you're asked to agree to enable Wi-Fi and Bluetooth so that smart things can connect to devices that use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Um, you're then shown the dashboard for the app. It's not immediately obvious, but you then need to proceed and actually initiate the discovery of your SmartThings hub by tapping the Add Device tile in the middle of the dashboard screen. And that'll take you to the device discovery screen where it starts scanning for devices. But I found it a lot easier to simply tap on the Add Device manually link. And that will expand the list of device types that you can add. add. You, of course, tap on Hub and then SmartThings Hub. The app will then download some additional controller software. This all just happens automatically. Uh, once that's done, you'll then be asked to connect your SmartThings hub by plugging in the power and network cable, if you haven't done it already. And once you've done that, you'll then be asked to type in the welcome code. This is basically just a registration code that comes on a card inside the box. Again, I'm gonna skip over that process here. 
Once that's done, uh, the registration process then completes and you're done. You can then either finish or go on to add additional devices. I finished, and as you can see here, it had already discovered one device, my Samsung Smart TV. It wasn't actually the hub that had done the discovery of that, it was actually just the app itself. You don't need a SmartThings hub, apparently, to uh, use this app to connect to Samsung Smart TVs. Um, but that's the process complete. As you can see, it was fairly easy and straightforward. I didn't have any issues um, completing the process. Um, I'm not going to go through the process of actually adding any other devices at this stage. In further videos, I'm going to explore the process of adding things like our Philips Hue lights, uh, our Ring doorbell, our Sonos speakers, uh, and see how well we get on with adding those devices and then controlling them through the app. But for now, I think that's a sufficient introduction to the actual setup process. If you want to read more, I have uh, written up a companion blog post that goes into a little bit more detail about how we got on. You can find the link to that in the description below. Or visit the website, newhometricks.com. Um, if you like this video, please share it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.